Hey, what's up guys? Walt's How To's and Reviews. So a little while ago, I made this video right here, which was a review on this Ender 3 Max. Now, if you watch that review, you'll see I was pretty disappointed with this machine. It had a lot of issues and problems. So naturally, I made modifications to the machine, and now I'm definitely happy with it. So I thought it'd be a good idea to make a video showing the modifications I made. Now keep in mind, this would apply to, I believe, all Ender 3s and most CR10s, basically the most popular Creality 3D printers. Now these are not the cheapest and they're not the easiest modifications, but I do think there's a good argument to be made that they are the best modifications. And my logic behind that is, they're really designed around improving the print quality. But at the end of the day, that's just an opinion. I just wanted to explain my viewpoint with these modifications. But enough of that, let's get into the reason why you're here, the modifications I made on my Ender 3 Max. This printer only came with one lead screw for the Z-axis, and although it worked, I felt like it struggled a bit, so I added another lead screw onto this. At the time, I couldn't find a kit that was made for the Ender 3 Max, so I had to buy one for the Ender 3 Pro, as well as a separate lead screw that was 500 millimeters to make it fit and work with this printer. I'll put all my Amazon affiliate links in the description below if you're wondering what I used and bought. And I thought it would be fun to make a little montage of me installing it since I didn't see any other videos that actually showed installation on an Ender 3 Max. So feel free to use the timeline to skip ahead, but sit back and enjoy this little montage. Let me know what you think in the comments of my first attempt at a little uh, montage. One thing I did want to note is you can see the wires that come with the kit to plug in the two stepper motors where basically it's the same signal but it just gets divided and goes into both stepper motors. You don't actually have to plug that into the main board. You can do it all outside as you saw me do it now. And if you're wondering what the dual Z uh, lead screws do it just ensures that you have an even level on both the right and left hand side as the print head moves And it just adds some stability to the printers a lot of higher-end printers or ones with big build volume Just come with it standard. All right, so the first modification I did was a necessity I could not get this thing to print without the nozzle clogging and jamming up and Ultimately what I found out was it was because of heat creep so there's a little heat sink and the heat break and the fan needs to cool that off so that you don't get heat creep but the fan I had wasn't doing its job so I would get a clogged nozzle after about 20 minutes of printing which was horrible it, it really stunk so I needed to replace the fan I figured hey if I'm gonna replace one of the fans I might as well replace all three so there's three fans one that goes to the power supply where I went with this huge fan that's way oversized and unnecessary I think the reason I did that is because it was literally the quietest fan and I was going for ultra quietness. I did a 12 volt Noctua fan to cool off the heat sink and there's also a fan that goes to the motherboard that I replaced and I did have to buy um, some step down, I forget the name, but they reduced the voltage because 
the normal voltage that goes to those fans 24 volts and you have to bring that down to 12 volts if you want to use the Noctua fans and the only reason I did that is because they're ultra quiet and boy are they I mean listen to how quiet this is One little caveat though with the Noctua fans is you want to pay attention to CFM, which basically is how much air they push and move, and you want to make sure you're giving it adequate airflow for each of the components. So obviously if you go way bigger, a lot of times you're fine on that, but the reason I bring that up is I have heard the argument that the 40 millimeter by 10 millimeter fan that's a direct size replacement for the fan on the hot end here doesn't move enough air to adequately cool it. Did just want to mention that in case you run into that though, but my personal experience, I didn't have any issues with it. All right, the next problem I wanted to solve was I was having a issue getting a perfect first layer. Now, that is actually, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of being successful with 3D printing and having a good actual print. Half of the problems that I see people run into and ask questions about out there are all tied back to they didn't have a perfect first layer. And in my opinion, that's actually harder to achieve than most people think. And with this large of a build volume, 300 by 300, and you really just have four corners to try to make the bed level, and maybe the glass isn't perfectly level to begin with, it can be pretty difficult. And that's where the BL Touch can help. Now, what was nice was the BL Touch on this machine was super easy to install, mainly because the machine is actually made to have it added on. On the actual board, there's a place to plug in the BL Touch, as well as there's a place to mount it right on the metal piece that you put the hot end on. Like, it's ready to go for the BL Touch. Really what it is doing is you're solving that problem of having an uneven surface with software instead of doing it yourself. If the hardware isn't perfectly level, the software can compensate from it. Now you still wanna get the hardware to the best of your ability as level as possible so that the software only has to make up a little bit. So what the BL Touch or an auto bed leveler does, you know, if it isn't level, you know, maybe it's slanted this way. When you're actually putting down the first layer, it'll lower the nozzle over here and raise it over here so that you have this consistent distance for the nozzle, helping you get a really, really good first layer, which is gonna improve just your ability to print and the overall success ratio of having good prints. Now, when I initially installed this BL Touch, I didn't have any issues. When I swapped out the extruder to make it a direct drive extruder, my BL Touch started getting all wonky and having like issues. And I think it was like a couple reasons. One is now that the extruder is right next to the BL Touch, the BL Touch operates with a magnet and there's a big magnet in the extruder. That's how the stepper motor works. So I'm not 100% sure if that was it or there was electrical interference with the wiring. I definitely know that had something to do with it. So there was two ways I solved that. One is I flipped my BL Touch so that the wires were on the outside, which maybe that's how you're supposed to do it in the first place. I think it doesn't matter, you can do either way but that definitely helped. And then I did buy this metal sleeving material to shield the BL Touch to have its own wiring. When I did do that, it worked and I didn't have any issues. So if you're having issues where your BL Touch is just kind of getting all crazy, I would definitely recommend buying that and trying that. Again, I'll put a link in the description for it. All right, so the next issue I had really wasn't an issue. It was just, I'm used to having direct drive printers and I'm used to being able to print all kinds of filaments, mainly flexibles, which the Ender 3 Max, I couldn't print this stuff right here in NinjaFlex. I just couldn't do it. Maybe if you really work on the settings and maybe if you print ultra slow. So I changed it to a direct drive extruder and that's when my machine went from eh to wow. And really I can chalk it up to this BIQUH2 extruder, this thing is phenomenal. I do think it's the best extruder hot end combo that I have. Like I can confidently say right now, what, what else is better? I think it's the best value for the price. What you pay, you get super ultra lightweight, which is going to help with ringing, ghosting. It's going to make your print quality really well. It's a seven to one gear ratio. That's how they're able to get that weight down, but still have enough power to really push the filament through. It's got a 
dual gear so it really grabs it really well and it is ultra precise tolerances which in my opinion i think this is the best extruder for flexibles so in the beginning i noticed a lot of people that were getting this extruder and trying it out when they first came out with it were having issues where it would bind up and i think that just shows how tight the tolerances were it has to actually be like perfect for it to work. And I was actually nervous about buying it because that was kind of the thing was like, there's a good chance you're gonna have a bad funky one. The one I got is awesome. So I'm hoping that they fix the problem. Now, the reason I think that they did change some things is the early reviewers, you can see that the, uh, this will focus where, where the connection happens, where your electrical connections happen, that this was facing down and everybody wanted it to face the other way or at least mentioned it. So now, this is straight out of the box, this is facing up. Another thing is that the gears would bind up. Mine are smooth, very, very smooth, both ways, and I'm assuming it's gonna be super smooth, so I think they worked out those quality control issues just based on that. As to where now it's just butter, ultra smooth, phenomenal. Like, I can't say enough about this extruder. All right, so I could go on a while about these upgrades, but this video is already long enough. I just wanted to wrap it up saying that you don't have to do any of these upgrades. The only one that I actually had to do was change out the fan because it wasn't providing adequate cooling, causing the nozzle to clog from heat creep. However, I do think that that, along with adding the other lead screw, was the best thing for this printer. The direct drive extruder is more of a want than a necessity. I could still get really good prints, especially from PLA without it, but as I change to different filaments, and especially just dialing and settings, I just feel like it was easier with this direct drive extruder, mainly like with retractions and stuff. The things I print, which is mainly these, it has a lot of supports. Retraction is really crucial, and it was just a lot easier for me to get the quality of print I was looking for in PETG with this direct drive extruder. All right, I really appreciate everyone watching. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, you know, let me know by giving it a thumbs up or subscribe, something like that. And I will see you in the next one.